Welcome to the Information Pathway Road Trip, an overview of how Genesis Cloud enables users of all kinds to quickly move from discovery to action and to easily get the data they need where they need it. I'm Will Thiel, SVP of Product Management for Core Platform. I'll be walking you through our reporting and analytics objectives, as well as some key areas of focus for us over the last year. I'm joined by Lori Nelson, Senior Director of Product Management for Data and Analytics. Lori will give us a demo of what different user personas can do in the platform to address their analytics use cases, as well as a view into our latest product releases. To start, here's an overview of the key objectives for reporting and analytics, which you'll see here at the Experience Conference. First, we're providing intuitive information pathways so you can discover what's happening in real time and then follow an intuitive path to drill into the details and take action to directly affect performance. Second, we're spanning channels and touch points with journey analytics to deliver comprehensive understanding of customers' behavior and its impact on the business. And third, we're further expanding data access for everyone, including non-technical users. In addition to our in-platform reporting, our users want to see Genesis data and analytics in the tools that are most relevant and familiar to them. So we've made it easy to feed Genesis Cloud data to external platforms, including third-party BI tools and enterprise data warehouses. In this presentation, we'll focus on information pathways and easy data access. If you're interested in journey analytics, I strongly suggest checking out the experience presentation dedicated to that topic. Let's talk about information pathways. Lori will demo this for you in the product, so I'll simply give a quick overview. We want our users to have a direct path between discovering a potential performance issue and taking action to quickly rectify it. With information pathways, users have the ability to drill directly into metrics across the platform to uncover what's contributing to performance changes, and then drill deeper, following the analytical breadcrumbs to arrive at the actions that can be taken to adjust performance. In this way, we're shortcutting the job of analyzing an emergent issue, and we're accelerating the process of getting things back on track. When it comes to data access, Genesis Cloud has been an open platform from the start, with most of the underlying data exposed through APIs and EventBridge. We believe customers and partners should have the ability to measure, visualize, and report wherever they want and with data that's as detailed and precise as they require. This approach has enabled Genesis Cloud to support customers with sophisticated reporting, monitoring, and analytics needs. We've now added a way for any individual user to integrate Genesis Cloud into their preferred external analytics tools. With our static export URL capability, a non-technical user can create customized tabular data views and publish them as static URLs, creating connection endpoints for external services. They can then automatically pull that data into visualization tools like Power BI or Tableau, and that data will update regularly and automatically. Moreover, since the data is in CSV format, not JSON, it can also be pushed into most databases or used directly by analysts and data scientists without additional data transformation. That ability reduces integration costs and accelerates innovation for customers with more sophisticated and bespoke external analytics needs. While democratization of data continues to be an area of focus for us, by far the most common tool for custom analytics and reporting is Genesis Cloud itself. Take custom dashboards, for instance. In addition to our out-of-the-box data views and dashboards, thousands of Genesis Cloud customers also actively maintain their own custom dashboards, viewing them millions of times per week to obtain views into contact center operations tailored for their specific businesses. And the percentage of Genesis Cloud customers actively using custom dashboards continues to increase, driven by our ongoing release of enhancements and new features. Our continued investment in custom analytics has also resulted in significant advances in our real-time alerting, among other capabilities. 
We're also particularly excited about custom metrics, which remain on track for delivery later this year. With that, Lori will now walk you through our reporting and analytics offering in the product, playing the part of admin, analyst, and supervisor in turn to show how our different analytics features apply to each role. Thanks, Will. We're actually going to look at four different types of users during the demo today because we're including the agent. I'll let you know when I'm putting on a different hat. To start with though, the introduction last year of Analytics Workspace was a big leap forward in providing a robust performance monitoring user experience. The ability to have up to 20 tabs open um, and quickly and easily switch between them is a game changer. We added several improvements for tab management earlier this year, including drag and drop of these tabs to reorder them as well as adding additional options to uh, duplicate, close, close all, et cetera, under the kebab menu. And then of course you can keep adding new tabs. And uh, when you're in the new tab mode, you will see this uh, list of available out of the box dash or out of the box views and customizable dashboards as well as a few out of the box dashboards mixed in. You also see under the other, a couple of additional uh, reporting tools like alert rules and scheduled exports. I've already opened scheduled exports, alert rules and dashboards, which has a nicely uh, redesigned homepage and includes some additional capabilities that we'll talk about in, in a moment. So this is where, uh, this is Analytics Workspace. It creates a great user experience. You also have the ability to see your saved views, which we will also talk about soon. We'll start with the administrator persona. Admins make sure that Genesis Cloud is configured to optimal settings for the business to run the contact center, including quick identification of system issues to be addressed. I'll focus on the activities an admin might use our performance workspaces to accomplish. So let's jump in and see what that experience looks like. Admins are going to be very excited to use our new data actions performance view to monitor error rates of data actions. So I'm going to bring that one up. As we look at this view, I'm, I'll take a, a moment to mention some things that our interactive views provide as standard exploration tools. Most views that most views have this um, have these capabilities along with them. So for example, this chart at the top, if I select one of these columns, I can see trends. There's a primary filter to filter kind of this main object. So I could type in GTS and filter it down to one of these. I'm gonna leave it as is for now. We have a date picker. And I'm going to choose, go ahead and choose last month for my date picker. You do have several options here and can do customized dates. Uh, we have a save and an overwrite an existing view option here, uh, refresh. And then our filter panel, this particular view doesn't have a lot of filters available to it, but many of them have categorized filter options. And then we have an export panel. These are all very standard options in our in most of our views. And they will all be seeing a refresh of the user experience and uh, look and feel, as well as making sure that accessibility is fully accounted for. And you will also see refreshes in the future on these tabular portions of these views. So back to wearing our admin hat, data actions are often used to get additional data to use during routing or the interaction. This is a demo environment, so you'll see higher error rates, as you can see in this column here. And I'm, if I go ahead and look at the trends of error rates, they're, they're pretty high overall. Um, you wouldn't want to see that in a production environment because it's a good indication there's a problem to be addressed. So let's take a quick look at just one of these. The Zendesk data actions is sitting at 53% for an error rate and 19 executions. However, I can follow one of those analytics breadcrumbs Will was mentioning. This I'm going to call this a mini drill in. You don't leave the screen, but you can see a little bit more information. Get user by phone number has 18 executions and is failing 56% of the time. Uh, so that is of concern. And so I'm going to continue to follow this information pathway by clicking on this data action. 
I want to keep investigating. And I'm going to continue to look at my error rate in this chart here. And you can see that there's a few blips, uh, several blips throughout the month. This probably requires some further investigation. I'm going to pause here and we'll pass that investigation off to somebody else. Uh, but that it gives you an idea of how an admin is going to investigate and use an information pathway to find out what needs attention. An admin user is also called upon uh, to maintain system hygiene to stay within limits and keep things running smoothly. Um, for example, I mentioned that Dashboards kind of has its own homepage, which I happen to have open right here. So the Dashboards homepage um, has been refreshed, as I mentioned, and now has some administrative capabilities to allow for deletion of uh, unnecessary dashboards. The, the dashboards can be owned by me or anyone, uh, and they can be public, private, or, or you can have favorites. But all of the public dashboards owned by anyone right now equals 211. Perhaps that's a little bit more than necessary, and an admin might want to come in and clean up unwanted dashboards with a bulk delete. So I could select several and delete. I'm not going to do that right now. And then lastly, for the admin user, Will mentioned export static link, which is a new feature released to GA last month that automates the process of bringing updated data into a BI tool such as Power BI or Tableau. Admins play a role in configuration of a static link. There are a few activities to be done by the BI tool administrator as well in conjunction with the Genesis Cloud admin. Perhaps it's the same person. Um, and so I won't go into detail on that. We do have quite a bit of really great documentation on the Resource Center that walks through the entire process for all players, whether it's the person scheduling the export, uh, the person setting up the BI tool to handle the export. Um, it goes into a script for authentication. And so all of that is covered. But for now, I'm going to go back to looking at my um, my exports, which I have open in another tab. I pointed those out. I believe they're um, under, if you look under other here, we have both alert rules, and alert rules and scheduled exports. I have both of those open. So scheduled exports, I already set up three exports to run after midnight every day to provide fresh Genesis Cloud agent, queue and wrap up performance summary data to Power BI users. To do this, I have to, uh, I simply schedule the export with the generate status link checked. I'll show you that. I'll just go back to the data action performance view because as I mentioned, most of the views have these options. Uh, so just for demonstration purposes, I will show you that once you check schedule export, um, you have this generate static link option. You have a lot of options here. I can choose yesterday, um, you know, choose a granularity on some of them, et cetera. And uh, you also have some formatting options here and CSV and PDF are your output options. You can send it to multiple email addresses, but since I want to generate this static link, I would select that and schedule it. And the next time it runs, it will also create a static link. I've already done that. Uh, so what we need to do is go and look at my exports. This is my inbox where I actually have alerts and I also have exports. And you can see that these exports have already been running. Uh, so I actually, all I would need to do as an admin in Genesis Cloud is copy this static link and get that over to the BI tool administrator. And they would follow the rest of the process here in the documentation, which we will, for the sake of time, not go into the weeds on that. So it's actually pretty quick and easy. And once, the, once these three... Uh, yesterday's exports are set up as a uh, data source in a BI tool, it will just keep updating and multiple people can, uh, like multiple Power BI users can build reports against it without any coding whatsoever. Speaking of a Power BI user, let's change hats now and shift to using Genesis Cloud Performance Workspace as a business analyst. Business analysts are most often charged with analyzing historical information to determine what levers to pull to optimize the performance of the business. So now that we have set up these three data sets to go into Power BI, the Genesis Cloud Agent, Queue, and Wrap-Up Performance Summary data, which will be refreshed daily, 
I can build a report using this data alongside other business data my organization has in Power BI, such as revenue data. I'd like a dashboard uh, that can provide a single pane of glass for my executives. Ultimately, then the system the data comes from becomes less important than the overall view of how the organization is performing. Here's a quick video um, showing a Power BI dashboard being refreshed with new data. from Genesis Cloud, which is three of these data sources, and then finance data is coming from another system. I can use this to interpret the effectiveness of my contact center based on wrap-up codes, which is the example that we're showing here. And you can see that the, the data was refreshed with a simple click of the refresh button, and it picked up that static link and uh, now has updated data from yesterday. So going back to our workspace here, let's take a look at another thing that Genesis Cloud uh, allows analysts to do, and that's to review SLA performance against the targets configured for each queue. We're actually gonna focus right now on the configuration part of things, because when we look at our supervisor persona, we're going to be looking at the SLA monitoring. Um, the admin area of our tool, of our product has um, the places where you can, if you go into the, oops, excuse me. If you go into the analytics area, you can see those SLA targets and the abandoned intervals. And these are set up at the level of the entire organization. So these intervals for abandons are set up and will show you when people are abandoning during. Um, the call process. And then also whether you include flow outs in the calculation, short abandons or full abandons, and then the short disconnect time can be configured here. And again, that's at the organization level. I can go here in queues to see how uh, the particular queue is calculated. So for example, um, I'm looking at the help desk queue. And I'm looking at voice and I can see that the service level target is 85% of the time having a 15 second um, answer target. And you can see that these are set up differently for chat, email, callback, et cetera. So let's say that I am looking at this and I realize that there is a, an organization, there's a group in my organization that wants to uh, exclude abandons when calculating SLA. The good news is custom calculation creation is on the roadmap with development starting in Q3. And as an analyst, I want to create a standard alternate SLA calculation for this group. So let's take a quick look at our prototype design since we don't have that in development quite yet. I can define a custom SLA metric to use side by side or as a replacement SLA calculation. While adding custom columns, I can follow this wizard to select from a list of metrics. I have different operators I can use, different metrics available. I can provide um, numeric values in the calculation or choose another available metric as part of the calculation. Since I created it, I have these options to edit, share, and delete it. Users with permission can also see this uh, admin screen, which is in our is going to be in our admin section under analytics. For example, if a calculation is no longer applicable or was created by someone that has left the organization, permissioned users can remove them. I've noticed that I selected the wrong metric for my first value on the alternate SLA uh, calculation. So I can actually edit that from here and correct that from, it says abandon right now, I'm correcting it to answer. Once I'm done with that, I can now share it from here as well. And so I'm, I've shared it with the group that asked for this alternate SLA calculation. Now, since 
calculations can be edited or deleted with a cascading effect to anybody it's shared with, it's important to have a history of that, uh, of those changes and see where the calculation is in use, which you can see here. And then you can view the entire history this way. So that is a look at an upcoming feature, uh, custom calculations. Switching perspectives, analysts use one of our out-of-the-box dashboards to measure ROI for predictive routing, which I will select from this list. It's called predictive routing. This is one of our out-of-the-box dashboard views, which are different from our customizable views, create your own type of uh, dashboards rather. This is a, a card layout view that functions a lot like a dashboard, um, but it's not in that customizable space. The billing queue, uh, is configured to use predictive routing and we'll use this view to get an A-B test style view of interactions routed with predictive versus without it. Uh, I'm going to take a look at the last three months. We can see how many actions here, interactions were routed with predictive routing versus without. This particular queue is set to be optimized on average handle time. So you can see the impact over the last three months, and it has improved by 30%. Now that said, there are multiple ways to measure ROI, and nothing happens in isolation. So it's not uncommon for an initiative to improve some KPIs while negatively impacting others. It's important to be able to see the combined impact, so we'll shift to this impact subtab to see that while the handle time went down, as we saw by 30%, the average wait time went up. Now this percentage looks kind of scary, but if you look at the values, 33 seconds wait for predictive versus four seconds for non-predictive. A 30 second wait time increase for almost three minutes in a handle time improvement with only a 1.24% impact to SLA indicates that predictive routing is performing very well. I like this view and I wanna save it because I wanna be able to run it uh, for the last three months periodically. So I can, um, I'm gonna go back here and save this view prior three months, billing, queue, routing, comparison. I'm gonna save that. And now if I open up another tab, I can see that in my saved views. As you can see, I've saved that a few different times. And if I open that up, I'm seeing the same thing here as I am here. I can close one of these tabs. I can close both of these tabs and then open it up again if I want. Future roadmap will make it actually quite a bit easier to share these saved views and we'll reorganize this screen to make it more clear um, what is an out of the box reporting object versus a shared one versus a saved one uh, versus something that you created yourself. Uh, so look, look for those designs in the future. Next, I want to review how effective our knowledge base is at handling customer inquiries without requiring the intervention of an agent. So I'm going to look at our knowledge, uh, knowledge performance. This is another one of our, uh, what I would call out of the box card layout dashboard views. So I'm going to choose a knowledge base and I happen to know we've got some decent data in the GSOL knowledge base going to change the dates. Um, this date picker will eventually be updated to reflect the one that you see in the other views. So now that I can uh, look at this, I can see that the overall queries, number of queries and sessions, and sessions can contain multiple queries, have decreased over the, the same time period, same previous time period as has the self-service percent has decreased by 5%. There's a decent amount of feedback. It's, it's more positive than not. You can also look at activity over time. 
uh, both for sessions and queries and see that that amount of self-serve sessions versus those that were assisted or unresolved. And then lastly, this customer effort widget allows you to see how much effort a customer is having to go through in terms of the number of queries that they have to uh, ask in order to get served. So all, all of this will point out opportunities to improve the knowledge base so we can optimize digital containment while providing the right customer experience. Now let me put my supervisor hat on so we can see real-time contact center monitoring in action. Supervisors need to see how things are going and take action if needed, and they use Genesis Cloud to track adherence to SLA and schedules and to review queue and agent performance. We're going to start with a common a very important supervisor responsibility, which is real-time SLA monitoring. I'm going to switch over to my alert rules here because to optimize my time as a supervisor, I want Genesis Cloud to help me quickly identify what needs attention. Research shows that the best way to do that is through alerting and easy to interpret dashboards. We've released and continue to work on major improvements in both of these areas, so we'll take a look. Um, recently, we released this real-time alerting uh, upgrade and I've already created several alerts here to save time. Um, let's take a look at this one. I have a particular queue where I want to be alerted if the SLA percent goes below 80 and the average wait time is uh, greater than 90 seconds. I can add more complex um, conditions and um, you know condition sets with ands and ors, et cetera. Uh, we're gonna keep it simple for now. I can send an SMS to myself an email to myself, which will default. Um, I can also send it to other people. And then by default, this will give me a toast notification in this upper right corner. Um, so now I can save that. Uh, there are two different types of alerts. You have conversation metrics, which uh, is what that was, and user presence. Um, so when you create user presence metric rules, you might be looking for um, if somebody is in a status for a certain certain length of time, like they're out of adherence. When I do create alerts, I need to enable them, uh, by the way. So they're, you know, these two are enabled, these two are not. So once it gives me that toast notification in the upper right corner, I have options for handling it. Uh, we will see that come up at some point, but for now, I've already, I already have some alerts that came up that I've missed. Um, I have options here. I can mark it as red. I can snooze it, mute it, view it, or delete it. So that is one way for supervisors to really um, save time, not having to track down what needs their attention, but rather being pointed in that direction. Future roadmap plans include smart links to take action on the alert from the toast notification uh, the alert inbox, the email, or the SMS. And then also included will be, uh, in our roadmap, will be creating alerts based on adherence for an entire team, and will also include many additional metrics to select from. So once I've been alerted to an issue, I want to continue my investigation, and I'm going to do that by checking my dashboard. And to save time, I have already created a dashboard and I will show you, I will go into edit mode and just show you how I created one of these widgets. Um, but I want to, I have, I have several widgets here and several widget types. These are metric widgets. Uh, these are chart widgets. And then I also have um, the ability to see these tabular lists of waiting interactions and interactions for my list of queues. Um, you even have options for web page uh, widgets or text. And I will mention that this view is in development for a significant uh, look and feel refresh, as well as adding in additional auto scalability. So for example, you see that this is wrapping right here. Um, with the refresh, This that will not be wrapping. It will auto scale uh, to address that. Um, one thing I will do while I edit this uh, is show you, you have multiple different uh, widget types, metrics, charts, text, and web content, which I, which I mentioned. Uh, if I were to clear this out, 
you'll see that I have the option to filter by queues, user, wrap up, flow, and flow outcome. I, um, I'm going to choose queue and I'll just choose a couple here because I'm not going to save this. Um, and then I also can choose a metric. You have count, percentage, or time-based metrics. I just want SLA or service level percent. So I'm going to add that. Uh, I am going to do what's called split my filters so that I can see this service level percent for each of these. And I'm going to compare two time periods um, and it'll show me the percent change. Now I'm going to, I'm looking at all media types here. I'm going to cancel this because I already have the widget that I want. Uh, so I'm just canceling out of that. I also want to show you about threshold warnings. The difference with threshold warnings and alerts is you have to be looking at the dashboard to see these color changes. It's just a visual cue. Perhaps you have a dashboard displayed up on a wall board and you just want to see these visual cues that there's something to pay attention to. Switching gears over to this um, agent status widget. This is a, an interesting one and you can actually take action directly from here. I can drill in and I can see, for example, who's idle. So now I'm seeing who's idle. I can actually click on this and I could put Christian off queue if I wanted to, um, or I can, I can remove this filter on idle. Okay, so I'm going to pause. There's our alert. Um, I'm just going to dismiss it. Uh, now, another action that I could take is if I see that my queue is in trouble, I could decide to put myself on queue, for example. Now, I don't really want to be on queue right now, so I'm going to decline. But notice that I get an adherence alert that I am not currently, I'm currently not responding. I can make myself eligible for interactions or go off queue. So I'm gonna go off queue. That is a contextual action to an alert. And we want to add a lot more of that going forward to the alert toast notification itself, as well as to the, uh, the alert inbox over here, the emails and the SMSs that come out. So you've, you've gotten a look at how I can use this dashboard in real time to monitor what's going on. What I wanna do now is take a little bit more of a deep dive into what's going on with this particular queue. Um, it's service level is below what I would like to see. Now I am going to, right now I'm looking at essentially the last seven days, um, which you can see like this previous seven days. What I want to do right now is I want to look at today. And I can use these charts up here. I kind of want to get this abandoned percent. Um, my service level percent, I can see this trend chart. And of course, we're only partway through the day. Um, I can look at yesterday and see how it went throughout the day, as well as take a look at my abandons. I noticed that my abandons, the percent is a bit high. So I'm going to actually follow this analytics breadcrumb. Um, I'm riding that information pathway and I'm going to follow that and look at abandons. And you can see right away that people are abandoning when they reach the two minute mark. This is a great time for that supervisor to have a conversation with um, either the scheduler or the person who's setting up the flows uh, in architect to say, hey, you know, we're uh, people are waiting too long and they're abandoning. How can we improve that um, wait time? So that'd be a great conversation to have with the analyst. I'd like to get a little bit more information about what's going on right now than what I can see right here. So I'm going over to the activity tab here and I can now see exactly what's going on in this queue, how many are waiting, how many are interacting. I can see some information about service level and abandons and average speed of answer. Um, here's my alert again. I can see uh, these are the waiting interactions. If I wanted to, I could um, see the details, manually assign uh, or assign, rather assign to myself or manually assign. These are all actions you can take directly from here. So now you're seeing a situation and you can directly take action. Uh, these are my interacting uh, interactions 
And I do have the option to go look at the details of that and see that agent timeline. For the sake of time, we're not going to follow that path right now. Uh, and then I have some very similar options here to what you saw on the dashboard. I can narrow it down to my um, idle, for example, and uh, I can also do the same thing here where I can put somebody off queue. And now you can see here that you can choose to filter directly from here. I can put myself on queue again um, or change my status from here. This is me, but I could be doing this for another user as well. So I could put DeAndrea on queue or I could change her to break. So those are some things that you can do directly from the queue activity detail screen. A couple other things I wanna take a look at real quick. Uh, one of the things that are um, that we hear a lot about is wanting to be able to export today's interactions. Currently, if you try to do that, um, you will see this message includes data prior to June 7th. Um, I wanna be able to export what's there right now. Uh, the good news is, is that it's coming soon. That will be GA. Um, this month. I can see my agents here. Uh, I also saw them over in the activity screen. From the activity screen or from my dashboard, I can drill directly into an agent. So I can look at Benjamin, for example, and I'm going to look at Benjamin for this month. Average handle, uh, ACW, and I could further drill in here, follow this information pathway. I have multiple other options here um, that I can see. I'm not gonna go into all of these because uh, just for the sake of time, a lot of these are covered by our workforce engagement management topics. And so if you want to uh, learn more about those, you can attend one of those sessions as well. And so I will, uh, kind of leave it at that, except to mention that I did monitor um, when I was in the queue activity detail, there was an interaction that Benjamin was um, having, and I went ahead and monitored and created an evaluation for Benjamin. And now I can see that interaction, including the timeline. I can listen to the recording. I've got the quality summary right here, which is that evaluation that I filled out. I'm going to uh, close that out for now and get a little bit more real estate. I can see the transcript with um, topic and sentiment analysis. And there's also some customer journey information here. So there's a lot of opportunity for a supervisor to keep track of what is happening with their cues, with their agents, and to take direct action from within analytics workspace. I wanna talk about one more feature that our analysts and supervisors are going to be very excited about. We hear a lot about the desire to sort anything and everything. Believe me, I get that completely. Um, Genesis Cloud is engineered to handle very complex big data in scalable, affordable fashion. However, to sort this big data in a reasonable way, we need to narrow the scope. So we're providing a new type of view called rankings for all of these different object types. And ranked views will support both tabular and graphical display. Let me step through this a little bit here. That's graphical and tabular display. And then you'll be able to select the metrics that you want to add to your view. And then you have other uh, ways to personalize it, including designating a primary metric, which becomes the um, entity that is ranked. And then you can... Um, have this view of it where you have a ranked order and up to 50, you can rank up to 50. Let's take a look at the graphical example. This one is the slider is set at 10. So we have the top and bottom 10 uh, for these various metrics that were selected and they're being shown in a um, graphical fashion. So that is a look at what's coming in the future. Very excited about this feature um, and looking forward to seeing how supervisors can use it to really monitor performance. Now let's change hats one more time to consider how an agent would use Genesis Cloud Performance Workspace to understand their own performance. 
I've logged in as an agent so we can th- see things from their perspective. I am Donna Gavin and be aware that Donna Gavin is a simulation agent in a demo environment. So um, it is going to keep trying to put her on cue uh, because I'm not currently scheduled in Donna's world. So we will go into performance workspace. And right now I'm going to minimize my desktop, my interactions. And I do have a few different tabs open from the last time I was in here. And I'm going to look at uh, a couple of different things. My queue activity. is a view that's gonna help me to see real time what's happening with my cues. So for example, I can determine if I should go on break as scheduled, or perhaps there are a number of waiting interactions that might warrant a delay if I can help out. Noticing that the uh, current interval service level is at 60% with these two waiting interactions. Another area where I can uh, check into my own performance is if I am if I am at the um, analytics workspace homepage, I can see my development, my interactions, my performance, my cues activity, my schedule, and my status. Those are the primary ones that agents are going to be looking at. So I've opened up my performance. You'll notice that you have statuses, interactions, schedule, and development as related views. The nice thing about this is if you if you save this view, it will save your uh, date picker and any columns that you've selected throughout these related views. So it saves a group of views for you. Now I am going to take a look at my average handle. I can take a look at all of these and look at my trend chart right here just by selecting these options in the header. Um, draft a call work, I'm not, I don't have any hold or transfer. So my average handle you can see is a little bit up and down. It did have a rough one yesterday or rather the day before. I can change my media type. It's a little bit better for callbacks than for voice calls. I'm keeping an eye on it because my supervisor has noticed uh, these blips in the past. If I look at my last three months performance, there's been a couple of these blips. Um, and so my supervisor has asked me to kind of keep an eye on this and I want to keep an eye on it because I want to make sure that my performance is where it needs to be. So except for this one week in March and now a couple of days ago, it's been pretty steady in the five minute range. As a side note, uh, outside of my agent hat, agents can focus on that specific channel as I mentioned, because obviously uh, handle time expectations are different for voice calls versus email, um, chats, web messaging, um, this particular agent only handles voice and callbacks. I want to save this view so that I can quickly and easily monitor over time how I'm doing. And so what I'm going to do is, is select last month, and then I'm going to save this view. And because I'm choosing last month, every time I open this view, it will show me last month. So all of June, it will show me May. When I flip into July, it will show me June. And I can uh, change this as I'm looking at it. But now that I have saved this view, if I come over here, I have this right here, my performance last month. So if I were to close out this view, open this, now I'm seeing my performance for last month. And that is it for us today. Uh, we're gonna end here. This was really just the tip of the iceberg of what kinds of things 
you can do in the performance workspace and uh, ways that as each different type of persona, you can monitor performance both in real time and historical simply by changing the dates and moving between these information pathways, between getting alerts and um, looking at dashboards and then following all those analytics breadcrumbs and looking and exploring the data. Um, up next for us is to add more and more insights and more and more actionability into all of these uh, reporting tools that are in our toolbox. So thank you for joining us today.